good morning, Tim and Lisa. How are you on this lovely day? Got my coffee. Got my coffee. I I, I have a cup that's a little bigger than usual, which yeah. is indicative of of, uh, of <laughs> Friday morning. It should so, say gulp rather than sip. <laughs> gulp, yeah. The mm-hmm. other side says this, which is kind of cool. So it's yeah. a very spiritual cup. So you guys will have just preached at church uh, because Don and I are off at a pastor's conference. So I do want to say thank you uh, for serving, being willing to serve in that way. And uh, and so I imagine revival has broken out at the Longmont Vineyard. And uh, no pressure. The, yeah, <laughs> uh, we're talking about the life of uh, of Jacob, and I have to say that. Uh, of all the patriarchs, to me, his story is the most interesting because he is such a, a convoluted character. Give us a little bit of background about you, about yourselves and uh, how you guys ended up in Longmont. And- so we arrived in Longmont in January of this year, and uh, we arrived from Lincoln City, Oregon, where we lived for 28 years. And uh, the last 16 of those, we were part of a vineyard church. And the last eight and a half of those 16, we led that church, like as co-lead pastors. Mm-hmm. And it was actually during that sabbatical time that we came to the decision and the conclusion that it was time for us to do yeah. move on. So the sabbatical was a milestone as far as giving direction for the next thing. Yeah. yeah. That, and that's good. I remember when I went on a sabbatical, um, I uh, this was... Uh, a six month break. And, uh, this was way back in 2003. <laughs> and I knew that during that sabbatical, I was entering a new season. And that's actually when I stopped pastoring was during a, a sabbatical. Um, so and it's kind of a foreign concept for people, but, uh, not, not a lot of people do sabbaticals, but man, it sure is helpful to stop and hear from God. And, and uh, it's interesting in retrospect, you look back at our seasons of life and, uh, thank God we can take these breaks to seek the Lord because um, mm-hmm. that's what we're, that that's a gift from him because he, because we're not stuck in the same thing for 40 years. A year ago, um, we came to that decision that it was time to leave Lincoln city and time to lay down our position of, of leading Coast Vineyard church in Lincoln city. And uh, so the, the interim time was spent um, working with the board and the congregation and, and navigating that transition. Um, yeah, so that's our that's that's recently where we've been. Prior to that, like, um, yeah, so before we were vocational pastors, we owned uh, a construction and development company, and kind of simultaneously for a while owned a, a surf shop on the Oregon coast it's called the Oregon Surf Shop. Um, and uh, you that, miss surfing because I know you're like a surfer guy. Yeah, uh, occasionally I do. I mean, we'll definitely like, um, hopefully. Lord willing, spend some vacations by the ocean, you know, in future years. Um, in and, warm water. Though. In warm water, yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm 52. Not the Oregon coast. Yeah, I spent, and I don't, you know, in no way am I like dissing surfing on the Oregon coast. It is a really great place to learn. If you can learn and become proficient at surfing on the Oregon coast, you can literally go anywhere in the world and you'll. Be <laughs> Seriously. What's the, um, what's the ideal warm water surfing place? Oh, there's a place in Micronesia called. Uh, I think it's the island of Pompeii, um, similar but different spelling. Um, yeah, it's not the volcano Pompeii. Yeah, it's 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 a wave called P Pass, and it's a right hand reef pass that that would be the way of life. I could go anywhere in the world and surf. I would surf that. I think I'm not as good as I was because I'm rusty, and it's a very good answer. <laughs> so when we were when we had decided that we were going to lay it down and we were seeking the Lord, I remember. One morning, the verse of the day was, who should I send? Um, Here I am, send me. And that's been a pivotal verse for Tim and I. And that morning I was like, read it. And I was like, okay, (laughs) Mm -hmm. here I am, send me. And just kind of renewed that commitment um, to the Lord and just like, yeah, okay, we'll do it. And as soon as I did that, um, I heard it's Colorado, it's Colorado, it's Colorado three Mm -hmm. times. Um, and so we just started discerning. That's how we ended up in Longmont, uh, Colorado. Yeah. I love the idea that you're still obeying, still following. And uh, to me, that doesn't diminish uh, your level of followingness. <laughs> it's just uh, the next step of obedience. I've been amazed at how much, um, how, how you guys, your hearts uh, are leaning into worship and your passion for the Lord. 
And I just want to commend you for, uh, it doesn't feel like you're taking a break from God, uh, which I think a lot of people, if they're taking a break from ministry or stopping ministry, um, you're taking a break from God. If you are, I can't tell. That process of discerning to leave, like it had been a paying attention to the, the, the kind of the quiet, still small voice on the inside for Lisa and I. Mm-hmm. Um, and the external had been really quiet as opposed to like a different other junctures in our life. There's been really strong external prophetic words, right? Like um, various things that have really steered and directed this time. It was like radio silence. It felt like from sort of mm-hmm. external voices, people saying um, and some of that was because I was by myself for three weeks. So. <laughs> but um, but no, I mean, I wasn't really. I, I spent, you know, I spent a, a weekend at a retreat center actually just down by Sedalia. Um, so there were people, but there, there, it was radio silence from the outside until we yeah. come to the decision of like, yeah, it's time. And we'd said that. And then actually we, we went to our regional vineyard conference and I went to a prophetic prayer time. We both did. And we both got really some of the strongest, clearest confirmation of, yes, it's time to go that I've ever gotten. Like mm-hmm. it was prophetic work. So that was encouraging. But it was interesting that I guess my point in that is God speaks differently. And right. The very first thing they said to me was, it's God's perfect timing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting uh, someday uh, as we're for all of us you toward the end of your life and you can look at these seasons and god's timing and why and uh and and how it's a gift uh, even though sometimes we're scratching our heads wondering uh what what the next step is or if we're really being, yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs>